Blade YGO. Stick to Beyblade, not Yu-Gi-Oh. You bought it again outplayed. You five levels below. Cause I'm about to get late. Something you don't know. What's <laughs> up, homies? Today's video is gonna be a YouTuber vs. YouTuber special. Triff vs. Blade. Blade's my boy. Shout out to him. Go check his, his YouTube in the description below and go click the red button that you see on my channel and on his channel. Subscribe to us both. We're two of the fastest growing YouTubers in the game, but I'm obviously like, you know, like the best in the world. Anyways, it is gonna be Pendulums versus Magical Musketeers with Max. It is gonna be a fantastic battle for the ages. So without further ado, enjoy the video. Yo, Blade, you're my boy, man. You're my boy, but I had to, bro, you are my boy. But I have to whoop your ass on your own stream, okay? I just gotta do it. It's what I do. I just win Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I win Yu-Gi-Oh duels. Not officially because I'm banned, but I win Yu-Gi-Oh duels. It's what I do for a living. It's what I do. I just whoop people's ass in Yu-Gi-Oh. So with that being said, guys, before we get started in this awesome, awesome, awesome match of Pen God versus Blade Yu-Gi-Oh, hit the subscribe button for both myself and go to Blade's channel. Link will be in the description below and give him a nice little subscribe. Now, as you see here, I'm playing Pendulum. I want to die roll. We're play I would have let him go first, but bro, we're playing for bragging rights here. And my pride is very important. Bro, pride's everything. So I have to poop his ass and make a statement. I want to tool the guy. We're going to see what happens. It's going to be a great match. Enjoy the match. I'm going to show you guys his hand here. You guys see right here, you got Instant Fusion, Casper, Doc, Last Stand, and Upstart Goblin. He has a great hand going first. Going second, not so great. My hand, on the other hand, is amazing. First or second, uh, Exodia through both. Now, drawing Servant is always great. You're going to draw Servant or Abduct to every hand. It's just the way you build the deck. There's 30 spells on the deck. In fact, this deck, this hand, we had uh, not that many spells. Not that many spells, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to keep going here. I'm playing through hand traps. Uh, so even though you had a hand trap, wouldn't have done anything. The pen call, it would have made me not draw uh, scales at the time, but it didn't matter the way the hand was. I always was going to get scales anyways. And I'm just going to put out a few interruptions here. We don't main the, uh, the guard dragons, as I told you guys before. We don't main the guard dragons at all. Uh, it's a little different of a combo. I screwed up the combo a little bit, but it's still like a lot of negates, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you're still going to end up uh, two negates here. I could have kept in demon and saved the vortex for later. Uh, I could have done that. I it would have been the same result in the sense, but having vortex is more safe. Just I don't know. I knew I was playing magical muskets, but... Uh, still, if you don't know what you're playing, you'd rather Vortex and Endymion because sometimes the deck you're playing doesn't play spells. So in a blind going first game, I would go Vortex, but I did know he was playing, uh, I knew he was playing Magical Muskets, but I would have, if I knew that, I would have saved, saved Endymion, but as I said, I'm pretending this is a random game one, so I would have gone Vortex just in case playing a deck that doesn't play, uh, that doesn't play spells, like Don Nerds or something like that. And, uh, so you'd rather the Vortex just in case they don't draw the Sekka's Light. So this is the opening of every single game uh, with this deck. Uh, obviously, you're going to get the Dengar through there. So you're going to have six interruptions. You're going to have uh, two Fog Blades, Vortex, Jack on the Gates, and then the Rusty and Dengar through Pops. You have six. Uh, after siding your Guard Dragons, and you're going to end up with a lot more. You're going to have eight interruptions. So but eight is already too much. So we decided. He saw clearly he can't beat my board. So uh, we're going on to game two here. Game two. I uh, open a good going second hand. Like Every game is good going second. He goes Casper Pass, which means I know he has hand traps and like... Uh, all the magic musket stuff in his hand. I actually predicted, yeah, you know, domination just brought last hand. I predicted he had two of these and maybe some hand trap and some like m m musket monster. So I assumed three interruptions. My three interruptions is baby food. I'm OTK for three interruptions, no problem. So instantly I see Casper and a pass. So I'm like, I'm gonna OTK this guy. Probably three interruptions. So I'm like, let's go a little by little. So I go pen call darker. What I should have done is uh, probably save the pen call for later. I wasn't expecting, I, I knew he played last time, but you know what, I'm going to get this over with quick. If he goes last time, I'm going to little by little just, uh, inter I don't care about the pen call, I already have scales, so I'm gonna, let's, let's get him get rid of the pen call, I'm going to plus by the dark worm. So let him last time, it doesn't matter, because then, and then he searches the dock, and this was threw me off a bit. Him searching the dock means to me, he probably has three magic musket spell traps in his hand, definitely at least two. So I'm going to hope he, this def I thought for sure he drew a monster on top, because... Uh, usually you're gonna draw a monster with just not just a magical musket, but dock by a Casper by itself. You're probably gonna add something else with it. So I mean, you know what he has? I assumed at the time two uh, two plus a random magical musket monster, but he had Ash. I wasn't expecting the Ash there. So what we're gonna do here is we definitely want it out of the Doctor. We're gonna Dark Worm, and just like that, we're gonna go. Uh, we don't really lose a card. We still have six cards on field because we're gonna get Gate Zero. So if you look at this Dark Worm Doctor, and we have four cards. We have six cards here. So it's like the pen call getting negated. We didn't lose anything because of the dark worm. So uh, I wanted to, I had to use the pen call anyways uh, before I did any monster plays. So 
Uh, just like that, he has in my eyes two other options left first my six cards. So I still see auto win here. Uh, I'm gonna go little by little again. I'm gonna lure, but he decides to ash because uh, I guess he didn't know. Uh, he wanted to make sure that I don't resolve anything with the ash. Really hurt there. If I had one more spell in my hand, my abductor would resolve and I'd win. And I wanted to OTK him with style. I wanted the Utopia double him on stream. And that's where my uh, cockiness kicked in. The best play would be normal summon purple poison attack and you just win the duel. Uh, normal summon purple poison attack and just win. Like, it's that simple. All his stuff in his hands shut off. So that was my mistake. That was my mistake. I wanted to go for the more flashy play. I wanted the Utopia double him on stream. So that was, don't be cocky like that in real life, guys. Like, it's my stupidness that uh, uh, is going to make this a little harder than it is. I would not have a Ash the Allure, I would have saved the Ash for the Abductor, but clearly he was saving the Desperado for the Abductor. Uh, but they really hurt for a hand with only two spells like this. Uh, he negates one of the spells. Normally I had more spells like an Upstart or Into the Void or something like that uh, to get the other counter on it. But I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Now in this situation, I should have even noticed at this situation, things are not looking good. Just attack, a, a Harmonizing Scale, Pendulum Summon, call it a day. I should have normal Summon Poison before anything, just a crash. But again, my... Uh, I'm like, you know what, there's no, he probably has one, yeah, but we're good, you know, uh, let him do it, uh, we're still safe here, we're gonna go Electrum, I expected him to interrupt it with cost domination, I wasn't even thinking of Desperado, I was thinking he was gonna cost dom, dom it, he was gonna cost domination, I didn't know he had Desperado, I was just assuming he was cost domination, I wasn't thinking of Desperado at the time, so I thought he was gonna negate the effect, scale, and then I was gonna, he told me to double him, so all, like, I was gonna, my plan was gonna work, you know, my plan was gonna work, he's gonna negate the effect, I go harmonizing, Utopia double win. And then uh, when I activate it, Abductor's gonna get the. I was gonna pen summon gate zero as well. I was gonna get the counter, the spell from uh, Utopia doubles. Even if he goes over his Utopia double or does something like that, I was gonna get a third spell for Abductor. And I, I did another misplay here. Like, like that, I should have realized that Desperado was a card. I knew it was a card, but I, just, I was expecting the, the gate effect. I was too used to Widow Anchors and Impermanences. Uh, no, so you, I always Electrum as bait, knowing I can still pen summon. So it's like they lose a card for nothing. So that was my mistake, not knowing the Magic Musketeer matchup enough, because you must know all matchups when you do them no matter what. So shout out Blade for doing that. And then I'm like, oh, that sucks for me big time. Now, uh, I still get the send, obviously, so I'm like, I can do a few stuff here. Uh, now here's what I should have. So there's two for Abductor, right? Uh, if he used the Cross Dom, I'd get three spells for Abductor and auto win. So good for him not using Cross Dom. He must have noticed Abductor, so he didn't want to activate a spell. Uh, so here I go, uh, Absolute, I'm like, you know what, we're gonna go Absolute, and look at this, look at this. So Absolute, he lets it die, obviously. I go Absolute because there's no, no other play I could have done to, like, really save myself. I could, could have gone Jackal and attack and take the counters from Abductor with Jackal. Well, that's what I could have done, and then if he activated Cross Domination, uh, to destroy the Jackal, Abductor would get three counters, and I could add a card for next turn. But I knew that with Absolute here, uh, he'd have to have lots of Magical Musket cards to really do anything. And I could add a card to the Abductor, which is gigantic, the second he activates any spell. So, I'll hope it's not lost here. I get Normal Summon, I can make beak, a Normal Summon, Beat Cop, Vortex, and then Pen Summon. So, I can do a lot next turn, and knowing his deck, that uh, knowing that this deck cannot clear, uh, OTK, or sorry, they can't even clear Absolute without having a lot of stuff. So... Uh, he's gonna need a, he's gonna need a lot of stuff to be able to clear the absolute. So we're gonna he goes max special two monsters. My things are not looking good here. He could pop this and I go vortex bounce. So it's like I have a lot of stuff I could do here. He ends up popping the abductor, which sucks for me. But I'm like, oh, damn, I still can't do anything. Giant shrine that was dead draw. But we keep going here. I'm like, you know what? Just never scoop. Uh, it turns out he, he instead of popping the absolute, he goes little by little popping my scales. I'm like damn it, he's gonna go unicorn and takes care of the absolute and. Uh, Things are looking good for me, game two. But that's okay. That's what game three is for. That's a, he goes to Unicorn. Like I said, he talks to the dog. I'm like, I need something nice here. Sir, uh, uh, that's not good. I'm mean, trying to bait some stuff. I know he's going to get rid of that with the pop card. The serpent's pop card. I can't do anything. Now we're going to go into uh, game three. Uh, hey, the, the reason why Yu-Gi-Oh! has three games, man, is because you can give one game to your opponent freely, and you're still going to win. So... Uh, don't be scared of losing a game. That's part of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like you don't need to in basketball You don't need to beat someone in four games. You have seven games to do it So always give them one game. It doesn't matter Sometimes you can even give your game your opponent game one for free and whoop the ass game two and game three over here We have an interesting hammer. You got uh, abductor servant allure and two cards You don't want to draw uh, in Zephyr Nui and Gazer. So it's okay. He's gonna play this very smart Okay, so he opened Desperado Casper Starfire Cross Dom and Ghost Ogre. That's a great hand going second for this deck you have all the great magic muscle cards you want for going second. Stop an interruption, pop a card. Uh, great. And Ghost Hugger. So Ghost Hugger for my Electro. He's good here. He's good. He can do a lot of stuff. Or Ghost Hugger for Servant. So that's what 
uh, you can do lots of stuff here. So I go Allure, and you want to know, uh, here's the beauty of this hand. Uh, I'm going to shout out my boy Santiago over here, okay? He, I already knew Gazer did, does this, everyone knows what Gazer does, but I kept getting cucked by too many situations and, uh, when I uh, when I duel my boy Santiago, uh, kill switch on dueling book. I, I wouldn't want to put the fourth counter on servant by putting a chronograph on the scale, destroying chronograph, putting a fourth counter on servant, especially a time gazer. But time gazer protects this servant from a ghost ogre. Uh, so if you look here, I don't have any turbo cards. I bricked for sure. I don't have any turbo cards, so I'm gonna have to normal summon anyways. So to play around a ghost ogre, you go servant. So I normal the time gazer. I'm like, there's no way he has a ghost ogre, but I'm like, uh, I don't gain anything not from summoning the time gazer. Like, if I don't, there's no reason not to summon the Time Gazer here. It's going to be my normal summon anyways, because I have a Zephyr Nui and a Gold, and an Oaf Dragon in my hand. So I don't gain anything by not normal summoning it. I don't lose anything by not normal summoning it. But it's just, like, the most best play, just in case he's a Ghost Ogre. Then I activate Servant's Effect, and what do you know, he had a Ghost Ogre. So, luck, he didn't, he knew about Gazer, that's good for him. So he didn't Ghost Ogre the Servant, but that was huge on my end. And then summon the Jackal, and now his Ghost Ogre is useless. So, just like that, I played around Ghost Ogre. Uh, beautifully, absolutely beautifully, just by that. And now, uh, uh, Dark Rose is going to add gate zero. Now we're going to be able to do a lot of stuff here. We're going to be able to guard dragon combo. But here's where I decided, I'm like, I could have done a little more stuff here, but uh, this is the best I could have done in this situation. Uh, we're going to then go uh, Nightmare Play. And we have Vortex Jackal, and uh, we're going to save the Distrudo and have a three, we have Counter Trap, Vortex, and Jackal, a uh, whole combo. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely amazing, man. I believe we into the void, and we didn't into the void. We have Oak Dragon. I don't even think we have. We can add Time Gazer at the end if we want. And uh, we have three. Like, look at that. So we got, <laughs> we got Double Fog Blade, Zephyr, Divine Strike, Vortex, Double uh, Jackal, and Dengarsu Rusty Pop. All through the Ghost Ogre, which you couldn't activate because if you uh, use it on the servant, Time Gazer to protect it. If you use it on Electrum, uh, uh, Jackal would protect it, and just like that, he loses a card for literally nothing. If you had two hand traps, it would have been good for him, but my the way my play was, I still could have played. So let's say, for example, you had Ghost Ogre and like a Veiler, right? So my Electrum would have got Ghost Ogre and my, he would have Veiler the Gazer or something like that. Or he, my servant would have got Ghost Ogre and the Time Gazer would have got Veiler. That's fine, I still won. Because then I go, he would lose two hand traps, I go Oath Dragon and Scale at the time, summon my uh, card from Extra Deck, then I have two cards, then I go straight, instead of Electrum, I go straight into my Nightmare combo, and I still have four interruptions uh, with a uh, Divine Strike as well. I still have, because I have Zephyr Nui has uh, five interruptions. I have five interruptions to two hand traps, even if he had a second hand trap to protect this. This deck puts these two hand traps thanks to Orcus, and thanks to cards like the, uh, Zephyr Nui, uh, and uh, mainly Orcus to be honest. So, and we did this with the Guard Dragon combo, which is nuts. Guys, that was the video. Blade! Hey, nice try. Nice try, bro. Nice try. At the end of the day, no one can deal with the Pengon. I'm just too good at this game. Shut up, Blade, again. Everyone go subscribe to him right now. Subscribe to me. Hey, if you're here already, why don't you subscribe? And I take this time to shout out my mats. So go check out my mats in the description below. Click every link in the description below if you support your boy. Hope you like this video. Deck profile coming soon. Deck profile coming soon simply because it is the greatest deck profile in the world. And I know I've been making us wait for the deck profile, but I've been tweaking it to make it the most perfect list known to mankind. Also, let me know in the comments below if you're excited to see me duel Gabriel Susi, the European champion, in a best of seven Pendulum God versus Salaman God match. See you guys in the next video. Peace.